So can the artificial intelligence and uh, cause the end of the human race? Marko uh, Bastovanovic, uh, a, a big uh, data software engineer at VAS.com. You have Thank the floor. You. Thank you, Georgia. So, uh, yeah, uh, welcome. Um, I'm very excited to have this talk in front of you because about a year and a half ago, I was at a similar conference and I heard this really amazing talk from one of the lead researchers in AI safety, which is the field in academia that uh, actually you know, works on these kind of questions. Uh, and I got so uh, interested and excited about the topic that I spent probably hundreds of hours researching uh, the, the, the topic. And um, I can, I can, hopefully I can uh, translate some of that uh, excitement or uh, importance of the uh, subject uh, to you. So the topic is highly controversial. Uh, usually when I talk with my friends about it, uh, you know, uh, some majority of them are uh, not really getting or not really uh, agreeing with me. Of course, I do believe there is some kind of possibility that AI can cause the end of human race, uh, hopefully not that high. Uh, and the majority of the people, um, I don't know, believe or think it's just a science fiction. Uh, so they are not really worried. So I, what I can promise you is that I took extra care of getting the facts right that I will present to you and you can draw your conclusions. Uh, you can draw the conclusi conclusions on your own. And you will answer if yeah, I can actually uh, cause the end of human race. So first things first, I'd like to talk about not really the current state, but what is currently in the AI uh, and uh, the progress recent or not so recent. So one of the main breakthrough, breakthrough, breakthroughs uh, was in 1997 when IBM deep blue beat Kasparov in chess. Uh, then in 19, uh, 2009, uh, uh, 2016, uh, we, uh, we beat uh, AI beat uh, Lee Sidol in the game of Go with AlphaGo algorithm and most recent in 2017 OpenAI beat uh, Dota 2. There is this uh, uh, repeating um, uh, uh, thing that, that happens in, in each of these games. Uh, before the event, usually people say it's totally impossible, we cannot beat uh, humans uh, because they, they, uh, they have intelligence or some kind of intuition or I don't know, domain knowledge, or because we are just, you know, by default superior. But I think this is kind of egoistic view, uh, and we are giving too much credit to ourselves. And usually th that uh, when, uh, after, uh, you know, after the event, everybody is kind, of, kind of disappointing. And they uh, almost always say the, the thing that beat uh, the game or humans in this and that game, which, is, uh, which are getting more and more complex, is not really an AI, just an algorithm, you know. Uh, for Deep Blue, it was deep searching through the um, possible states in the chess. AlphaGo had, uh, you know, uh, tons of labeled uh, matches, and uh, some of them, some of the moves, he decided on, on their own. Uh, similar with OpenAI, I, 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 I Dota 2. I believe that uh, it's always AI. We're just not calling it AI. It's just getting more and more complex, uh, and uh, it's, it's something we should think about. How much more complex will it? be. Um, so how are uh, usually currently in uh, all these games that I have been uh, beaten, uh, reinforcement learning has been the uh, ma uh, main algorithm and the way it works is uh, very different to what we usually do uh, and use in our day-to-day -day work. I suppose a lot of you are not here big data scientists or practitioners. So <laughs> Uh, you, um, in, in supervised learning, we need to label manually da the data. Uh, you know, it's tricky to get the big uh, amounts of data depending on the, the problem. We, uh, we need more or less, but it's usually a problem uh, to get so much, uh, so much labeled data. And in reinforcement learning, uh, it's, the, the situation is not such. So uh, uh, this is the, the game call, uh, called Breakout, and um, I, I will show you how reinforcement learning works on this kind of game. So the algorithm is uh, fed uh, only the, the, the pixels, uh, so, sorry, uh, pixels of the of the game, which is this part, 
uh, it does not, not know at all uh, what is uh, what's going on on the screen or uh, why is it there. It's just an algorithm that is uh, um, uh, same for all of the games that it can be uh, played. It has own uh, what it has. It has controls to go left or right, and it has the score, uh, which tells them how successful it was. And then what it what, what it does, it just plays over and over again and learns. Uh, using um, by boosting the steps that it took to get a match with higher score. This is also pliable if, if you uh, are dealing with some kind of game like a chess or Go, where you uh, do not have a score, but in fact, uh, or the score is not so easily representable, like in, in, in this kind of game, but you have, um, you, you can play the uh, same version of the algorithm against itself over and over. Uh, usually, what, what we are seeing uh, in, uh, is that um, the uh, algorithm is, is playing like tens of uh, hundreds of thousands of games uh, against itself until it reaches uh, some kind of um, uh, result that is uh, better than uh, than human. And what's pretty interesting is that this all this is very transferable to real world. Uh, it's not only games. Uh, games are just you know good uh, like. A, a uh, good way to train because y y uh, you, you can say you can say safely uh, interact with your environment. Uh, I, I suppose uh, you know deploying uh, uh, reinforcement learning robots uh, or warriors is not really you know uh, a smart idea at, at, at this time uh, because it will get all the negative headlines. Uh, so I'm going I'm going to show you how the the algorithm works. So in, in start algorithm knows roughly about that it needs to hit the ball but you can notice that a lot of times it just you know misses the ball and, and just stands there um, but as, as the game uh, as the games pro progress and this is very uh, simple game so it's, it handles it uh, it's not a lot of the measures it needs to learn you can see that most of the time now it, it gets uh, the, the ball and hits the ball and after a while it hits the ball every time uh, and, and finishes the game every time because it, uh, it, it learned that it, it absolutely has to hit the ball. But then something for me, magic happens. Any of you who play this game know there is a trick that you can actually put the ball at, uh, right to a, like a, a hole there. So the, the game ends much faster because the, uh, the speed, the uh, destination that the ball needs to traverse is much uh, smaller. And this is the exact c kind of behavior that we are seeing across all of the games, across chess, across AlphaGo. AlphaGo, uh, sorry, Go players now, human Go players now, are actually looking at the AlphaGo algorithm and learning strategies that they have never seen. And during the learning of the, uh, the, the training phase of the AlphaGo algorithm, uh, the, the, the practitioners from DeepMind uh, noticed that uh, uh, algorithm was actually learning all of the strategies that pros are using one by one. Next thing that uh, always happens uh, is that uh, once the, the, the human level is reached, we soon surpass it by a large margin. So here, uh, the, oops, oops, okay. okay. So uh, green dotted line is the, the version of, the, of AlphaGo that beat Lee Sedol. So Lee Sedol is uh, the top ranking uh, a player in, in Go. Next, they, uh, they released um, AlphaGo Master, which is significantly uh, better, so far above any uh, human c can ever reach. And then they, uh, they, they released AlphaGo Zero, which only, uh, which uh, after 40 days surpasses the AlphaGo Master. But what's interesting is only after only three days, uh, it uh, reaches the, the level of Alpha um, uh, Go Lee, which beat. Uh, Champ, uh, human champion Lee Sidol. Um, and uh, the, the algorithm takes less time to uh, less and less time to be developed uh, to, to, uh, to finish training. Uh, and we as humans are uh, limited in our capabilities uh, by volume of our brains, and but uh, this does not apply to machines. Uh, so, as I said. Once the human level is reached, we soon surpass it by a large margin. Uh, so, why the, one of the also facts that is important for to understand AI and its uh, progress is 120 years of Moore's law. But this is not really a Moore's law, 
because Moore's law states that a uh, number of transistors in dense integrated circuit is getting doubled every uh, two years. Uh, during, uh, once we reach 22 nanometers, we kind of slow down with the progress. Uh, this is very similar to Moore's law. The y-axis is still exponential and this, these are the years. And this graph represents how much calculations can you get per constant dollar. So let's take $1,000 and how much calculations that takes you. This is the actual, this is the actual uh, number that, that uh, we all care about. Because I, I mean, personally, I don't care if, if the, the, the CPU of, of computer that I use in a data center is you know, one by one centimeter or it's just an enormous data center with one, you know, 100,000 uh, machines there. I'm interested in how much I need to pay to train my model. And uh, the, uh, what we can also see is that the actual speed is, uh, is even increasing. All of the latest entrants here are GPUs. Uh, and we know how uh, hard NVIDIA is working and uh, by you know, uh, impl implementing, uh, creating uh, even faster GPUs that spend less time, less energy uh, and are um, uh, cheaper to uh, produce. For, for me, one of the amazing facts in that field is that uh, NVIDIA, Vol uh, NVIDIA Volta actually has 10 times uh, processing power comparing to uh, uh, Kep uh, uh, Kepler. Uh, with the same amount of transistors in its um, in its GPU, which shows uh, uh, how much are we advancing. Um, so th these are facts. And now I'm going to talk about a little about predictions. And for the predictions, I'd like to show you some two uh, two cases with, which is star contracts. Uh, one is the, about predictions. If you if you were in 1970s, I I, I wasn't there, but I hear people were very eager and very happy about space explorations. Everybody was, uh, you know, uh, ask anybody, they will say we will have uh, bases on the moon and we will explore other planets and everybody is excited. Uh, and then we have another pred uh, prediction, of course, that never happened. Uh, and we have another exp uh, uh, prediction. Uh, 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 Wilbur uh, Wright in 1901 said, I don't think we men will fly for a thousand years. Wilbur Wright was one of the Wright brothers that actually created the flyer, the first uh, aeroplane, uh, only two years after that. And I think the things that we need to look uh, to make right, proper predictions are incentives, financials, and talent. These are all connected because one drives other. But um, in the case of uh, you know, space exploration, uh, uh, the, the space exploration was basically a piece in context between US and Russia. Once the funding stopped, once the uh, US proved its dominance, uh, funding, which was, was about 5% uh, of the GDP of US, which is enormous, funding stopped or slowly uh, dwindled down. And now we can, we can see the US actually paying Russia to launch uh, their astronauts because they don't have their launch capabilities. Well, they do have, but uh, soon SpaceX will take over. Anyway, incentives, financials, and talent. I think that's the, the most important thing to, to look at. And uh, so let's let's talk about financials. DeepMind, the same company that uh, created AlphaGo, um, uh, we, uh, this is title for a year ago, uh, it reduces Google data center cooling bill by 40%. So if you know that um, uh, that, that uh, uh, Google has one of the uh, largest data centers and that 3% uh, of all uh, human uh, or global uh, electricity spending is on data centers. We can just imagine how much money this actually is. And um, and, and there goes the, the, the reason why uh, it with similar cases. And we all know the, 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 the companies just love, uh, you know, saving uh, that kind of money. Uh, that they, they're investing a lot of money to, uh, to, to get AI algorithms that are um, capable of achieving such results. And uh, the latest news regarding this topic is that only a few weeks ago, a, a Google totally eliminated, I mean, like uh, 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 AI is now controlling directly uh, cooling of the, their data centers without, previously it was just suggesting to humans what they should do. Now it's, it, it's basically controlling all, everything on their own. I hope there is a, you know, uh, turn off switch. Uh, next, so after financials, talents go to, to uh, uh, and follow finance. Uh, th this topic from uh, the New York Times says AI researchers are making more than one uh, million dollars even at a non-profit. This is uh, 
uh, about Ilya Sutskiver, who is one of the uh, stars in OpenAI, uh, a nonprofit that uh, works on AI safety, uh, that's funded by uh, Elon Musk and uh, Sam, Sam Altman uh, from Y Combinator. Uh, the only reason why, why you, we are aware of this, um, these sums are actually because uh, OpenAI is a non-profit, so they have to release uh, their data, uh, their financials. And this results in, a, in a, like a, some kind of exponential curve. Um, the, uh, here we can see the number of machine learning and AI archive papers submitted uh, in the last uh, five years or, or, or six. Uh, so the talent is going to AI and to, to make research even uh, faster. So th there is a lot of, I, I'm very optimistic and I think AI will be very beneficial to humankind. And I think there is a lot of good stuff. I won't list it here or talk about it, 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 uh, about it in too much detail because I'm mainly concerned about the bad stuff that can happen and that can prevent us from achieving all this. But abundance, uh, making everybody happy, uh, just uh, also uh, there are other people that are uh, that think that we will achieve immortality uh, or colonize, colonize our planet and many, many more. Uh, so uh, the, I, I would like to talk about the bad stuff that can prevent us from achieving all those great things. So first uh, uh, is massive unemployment that, is take, uh, that appears uh, during the automation and uh, advancing of technology. Um, this is, uh, I was very amazed by you know, Donald Trump saying, make America great again. Uh, here we can see, uh, and because I think America was great as, uh, as, as it was, I mean, uh, they're doing just fine. They're not uh, going backwards. This is uh, the manufacturing output of the US throughout time. And you can see it's constantly rising. Uh, and overlaying that, we have uh, employment in the manufacturing industry, where we can see that until 1970s, we, um, uh, the, the trend is following employment. There are more people being employed to produce more output. Then it kind of stagnates, uh, and then it, it has a really sh a sharp decline. The reason for this is automation, uh, automatization and the advances of technology which will be all great if like tomorrow we go to our bosses and they say, yeah, you can only work one hour per day and we'll get you the same amount of money, but it's not what's happening. Uh, what's happening is that inequality is getting larger and larger, uh, bigger, sorry, and that, uh, that there are a lot of people that are unhappy and they can cause um, a lot of uh, you know, turmoil or political instability. Uh, next is uh, AI weaponization. I'm going to uh, relax for a couple of minutes and do uh, show you this latest presentation about the weapons. Oops. Uh, just a second. This we forgot to to connect the um, sound. Okay. Uh, some more uh, audio out today. Uh, okay. But we have something much bigger. Your kids probably have one of these, right? Not quite. Hell of a pilot? No. That skill is all AI. It's flying itself. Its processor can react a hundred times faster than a human. The stochastic motion is an anti-sniper feature. Just like any mobile device these days, it has cameras and sensors, and just like your phones and social media apps, it does facial recognition. Inside here is three grams of shaped explosive. This is how it works. Did you see that? That little bang is enough to penetrate the skull and destroy the contents. Scary, right? Uh, 
Of course, luckily for us, this is uh, just a staged, uh, it's a fake, it doesn't exist yet. The reason why it feels so uh, real is that all of this, uh, all of the technology required to make such a thing, all of the exists, it's just a matter of miniaturization. Uh, uh, I'm actually quite certain that there's somebody out there working on this, it's just a matter of, uh, it's just a question whether or not they will release it or not. And there is uh, quite, a, uh, I would say, dramatic push against uh, using AI and autonomous uh, weapons in, in general. Uh, and this is one of the, 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 the worst things, I mean, the, the, the one of the main concerns in, uh, in a medium run. Uh, I think we can do it, we can prevent AI entering um, uh, our uh, worlds. Uh, the same way as we prevented, you know, biological weapon, chemical weapons, we can also prevent AI. The, how we can do it is just, you know, uh, vote against it or if somebody comes up with similar weapons, which we should, you know, um, have a strong voice against that. Uh, because the, uh, I, I only presented you the small clip, but the, the whole clip is available, uh, the whole part of the clip is available in, in YouTube. Uh, the, uh, such AI uh, technology can be misused, and it can be it can have uh, really serious consequences. Uh, next, of the um, uh, bad stuff that can happen are just various malicious uh, uses of AI. Uh, one such example is spear phishing, which is phishing, but uh, that is highly custom customized. Uh, so a uh, AI or algorithm can uh, dig a uh, lot of data about you, or using various sources. Uh, like Facebook or Twitter or whatever, and they can create um, a d directed phishing attack that looks very real. Also, speech, image, and video generations are uh, the, um, uh, can be used to uh, generate a voiced image or video that looks real. So imagine, you know, your wife or your husband calling you and saying, uh, you know, uh, uh, transfer thousands of dollars to this and this account. Uh, just to show you the, the how rapid the progress is, so this is the uh, face generation across uh, you know, four years. This guy is totally uh, generated. It, it, he doesn't exist in the real world. It's just uh, an example using generative adversarial network, uh, and you know you can create a, uh, a guy out of nowhere. Uh, also, uh, political instability is also one of the uh, big problems. Uh, we can um, we see in the last U.S. general election what happened with you know if you manipulate Facebook, uh, we can only expect uh, similar kinds of um, malicious uses to to uh, appear, and the AI can uh, you know uh, make that um, th those uh, tries to, to cause instability uh, even more severe. So this is one of the uh, next, one of the, the, the uh, bad things is that uh, all of this that I talked uh, until now for, for the bad stuff is all of the technology that we have right now. But as uh, technology advances and we build uh, better AI, uh, uh, the, the risks will be much higher. Uh, the, 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 uh, this is Nick Bostrom and he done very influential research. Uh, and he surveyed 170 AI experts. He picked the top uh, people that are releasing articles in uh, machine learning and AI topics and that pre present in the conferences. Um, and uh, like even he averaged the results with his colleagues about uh, eight top AI experts that are doing this every day that are uh, on edge on the cutting edge of the research, saying uh, are saying that there is about 50% chance that we will reach a, a super intelligence by 2040, 2050, so 2030 years. And super intelligence, by definition, is uh, AI that is capable, um, more capable than humans across all of the levels. So talk, think about programming, art, uh, whatever, politics. We just you know universal. Um, uh, I think that that's more capable than humans in any on, on, on any field, and 90% uh, of them think that we will reach it by 1975. And what's really bad, uh, what's really uh, uh, bad news is that one third of them think that the outcome is bad or extremely bad. The reason why they think that is that we do not really have uh, sorted the problem of uh, AI alignment. And AI alignment is a problem in uh, AI safety uh, that. 
should uh, make sure that AI that we create, no matter how capable it is, it is actually uh, you know, uh, um, doing in our best interest and not uh, something that, that, that we uh, uh, erroneously program it for or somebody takes advantage of it. And um, uh, the, the story that describes this problem uh, is, is very uh, similar to uh, problem the story of King Medas. So King, king Medas uh, is, was a king in ancient Greek. Uh, he was very uh, materialistic, so th he had one wish and wish uh, th 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 that was granted to him. He wished that everything he touched turns into a gold, and the first thing he touched was his daughter, which is um, th the example of where he wanted actually to be rich and not to, you know, to kill his daughter. But uh, this is like a real problem that, that people, one of the most important problems in AI safety and that, that can, uh, is how to uh, say properly to AI uh, what we really uh, want. And this problem is not solved, not solved by far. Are there are people working on it, of course. And here is the, um, uh, 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 one of the uh, largest uh, beneficial uh, com conference uh, tackling the topic of uh, AI safety. It's called Beneficial AI. A uh, lot of famous people in the field, a lot of people that you might recognize names. So people are working on this, but it's still, I think, it's, it's not really enough at, uh, the re uh, when you compare uh, how, um, uh, what is on the, on the stake. So just imagine uh, even even the small percentage, if, 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 even if it's not 30% that outcome of the uh, very uh, capable AI is uh, bad or extremely bad for humankind, even if you say it's 5%, you know, if you go to an airplane and pilot, tell, pilot tells you welcome to the flight, there is only 1% chance we will die, I'll, I'll bet you will leave the plane. And uh, making, uh, if we mess up with the AI, it will infect all of the humanity, not just, you know, some uh, plane with uh, uh, 1,000 or 500 people in that. But uh, you can help if you want. Um, there, these are all organizations that are uh, tackling uh, the, the problem. Uh, in academia, the problem is called AI safety. Uh, if, if you want, I can. Uh, they're usually are looking for uh, math uh, PhDs or um, you know machine learning uh, um, experts. Uh, they're they doing the research. I have uh, contacts in majority of these institutions. Uh, they're all uh, non-profits, so you can even donate money if you, if you want. Uh, so, yeah, I think now it's time to questions, but of course, the, the, the ultimate question, uh, the answer to everything is 42. Uh, I can only give inferior answer to that, but do ask. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Marco. Uh, I guess uh, you covered everything in your presentation because we didn't receive any questions. Uh, but I can see a question from the audience. Uh, do we have a additional mic? Hey, hello. Uh, my name is Janko. Uh, first of all, great, uh, great uh, presentation for the end of the day. I really like to spark the imagination. Um, uh, my question is actually, like, uh, it's not a direct question to you, but uh, are you familiar with a game called Universal Paper Paperclip? Universal Paper? Paperclip. Uh, yes. Uh, yeah. You mean uh, like a machine that produces paper clips? Yes, across, yes. Yeah. It, it, is, it is very, uh, very tight. So basically my, my question was, are you introduced to it? And uh, I would like to suggest to anyone who is interested in, like, to see uh, how, how something could escalate, uh, you know, for something so benign. Uh, and why it is important to coordinate all of the efforts because somebody in, uh, in a garage could be making something that is totally unrelated to uh, to the destruction of the whole of the whole world, but it can escalate uh, at at scale and speeds that we are not accustomed to in our in our thinking. So um, uh, basically, uh, it's not more of a question to you, more of a suggestion to, a suggestion to everyone. So if you are interested in that, Google Universal Paperclip and uh, enjoy the wild ride. That's basically it. Thank you. Thank you. Um, maybe some final uh, closing remarks? Uh, no. Uh, yeah, I mean, if you, if you believe it's then the world is coming, it's great time to be depressed because, you know, cocktail is right here, right after this, we can all drink like it's the end of the world. So enjoy.
Thank you very much, Marco. Yeah. Before you leave, uh, I would like to give you the certificate uh, for the contribution of the conference. Thank you. I'm available for questions, of course, I will gladly discuss if anybody wants. Thank you very much. Um, and this concludes today's program. Um, what a conclusion. I would like to thank you all for the amazing uh, speakers, uh, for sharing their knowledge and experience uh, and vision with us. Additionally, I would like to thank uh, all of you for being such an attentive audience. Last but not least, we would like to thank our sponsor of the day, Com Trade System Integration, once again. And we invite you to join us for the cocktail, which will happen in the hallway. See you tomorrow. I'm coming home. Coming home. Coming home, baby, now. You know I'm praying every night.